I'm glad to introduce and start our Q&A session with Symphony founder Fabian Potencier. Uh, I'm sure you are pretty well know Fabian because he is a founder of the biggest framework of the world in PHP world, Symphony. And uh, have you ever know, do you know that when it was founded? As far as I understand, he started this project in 2004, almost 20 years ago. Just imagine. Uh, and now we have Symphony the six. Russian. Moro Fabian is a serial entrepreneur and among other companies, he founded uh, Sensio in 1998, uh, which became Sensio Labs in 2012, as this is a software company providing products, services, and technical support for the open source Symfony framework. Within Sensio Labs, Fabian now focuses on creating a new generation of SaaS solutions designed to help PHP developers to improve their code quality with Symfony Insight and Performance Black Fire. And I should say that Fabian is uh, maybe one of the most influencer person in uh, PHP world, thanks to the to Fabian, uh, PHP is not done, uh, but development, fast development. So, Fabian, hello. Hello. I'm really glad to hear you. And today we'll have we'll have a Q and A session. We've previously uh, asked our guys to uh, to create questions and. The most popular one, I think that uh, not only in our community, but uh, uh, wherever you just appears, uh, it's what are your thoughts on competing with Laravel? Uh, when is Symfony the better choice? Yeah, that's uh, probably the question I have all the time. Uh, <laughs> And I think that's not that's not a particular uh, you know interesting question to be very honest uh, because I don't think there is any competition between uh, Symfony and Laravel. Uh, I mean both frameworks they are both in PHP, um, but when we're talking about competition, I'm more thinking about other languages, right? So I'm more thinking about uh, Python frameworks or Ruby frameworks or whatever language frameworks you're talking about, maybe JavaScript as well. Uh, not so much in PHP. So, and, um, you know, if people are using uh, Laravel, they are using some Symfony as well. Uh, Laravel is using some uh, Symfony components anyway. So, you know, the market is huge. Uh, so even having more than two frameworks would not be an issue. Uh, and, in a, you know, uh, you said that I created Symfony uh, 20 years ago or almost 20 years ago. And back then we had uh, dozens of frameworks in PHP. Uh, and we still have more than just Symfony and Laravel. There are many frameworks out there. Um, and, uh, you know, depending on what you're doing, depending on your knowledge, skills, uh, developers, and what you are developing with, uh, with Symfony or, PH or, or, or with PHP in general, uh, maybe Symfony is a good fit, maybe Laravel is a better fit. So it depends. Uh, and, uh, you know, having choice is always a great idea anyway. Now, if we're talking about uh, Symfony uh, and Laravel from a technical perspective, uh, I think there is a fundamental difference between Laravel and, and Symfony. Symfony is really two different things. The first one is Symfony is a set of components that you can use standalone, right? And it's kind of unique. Uh, there is no competition there. Uh, or, I mean, there are some, some independent libraries, but I think uh, Symfony has the, the biggest set of components that is available. Uh, it's, uh, and, uh, you know, you can use them independently from the other thing that we provide with Symfony, which is the full stack framework. And I think that, you know, when, when we're talking about competition between Symfony and Laravel, we are more referring to the Symfony full stack framework and not so much, uh, on the, uh, components themselves. And there, I would say that, you know, during the last few years, during the last few versions, we've made sure that, uh, Symfony, uh, is becoming much easier for uh, newcomers as well. So I think Symfony has a reputation of, you know, the deep learning curve. Um, maybe it's a bit uh, more difficult to get started with Symfony, 
but I think that you know uh, during the last few years we uh, worked really hard making sure that it's not uh, the case anymore. Um, so at, at the end of the day, it also depends on what you already know. If you know some symphony, I think symphony is, is best. If you know some Laravel, then maybe it's better for you. Oh yeah, thank you for this answer. Uh, as for me, in my opinion. Uh, but uh, maybe not only in mind that if you have something complex and you need some high performance, uh, so it would be a better choice to choose Symphony, just uh, if it should be uh, really something complex. And if you need something easy, easy bootstrap just to start to test MVP, it would be easier and maybe better to choose uh, Laravel and uh, uh, maybe some PHP world is separated on two uh, different uh, clubs, uh, two different communities, uh, Laravel and Symphony, because there are maybe, I should say that only two big competitors. Others are not so big and uh, really uh, they don't have such a big community. And there is another question about um, about frameworks, uh, you mentioned that uh, uh, it is not a competition. And uh, how do you think? Uh, just took. Uh, is there any place in the market for another for new PHP framework? And uh, maybe uh, you uh, could uh, give some advice uh, if the developers have such desire to create a new framework. Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, I think creating a new framework, uh, you know, if, if you want to create a new framework, uh, you need to have uh, some new ideas, uh, something that would be very different from Symfony and or Laravel and or whatever framework. Uh, so if you have a new way of developing applications and you think it's a, it's a great way, then maybe that's, uh, you know, that's a good idea. Um, and in any case, I think it's always a great idea to create your own framework, just, you know, uh, to learn more about how it works behind the scenes and uh, better understand the mechanics behind uh, a framework. Even if you, you know, don't use it anymore and it's just an exercise uh, to learn more about PHP uh, and HTTP and all the standards that you need to know uh, to better understand, you know, how things work. Um, starting a new framework nowadays in, you know, in the PHP world is probably something very difficult. Uh, the barrier of entry is really high. Uh, and uh, so I would not recommend it uh, if you don't have a, a radical, you know, a different view of on on how you you should develop nowadays on on, on PHP. I can't hear you anymore. Yeah, uh, thank you for this answer. I think that community has also a big, plays a big part of the of, uh, success of the framework. So community is maybe one of the greatest thing uh, that you should have. And uh, developing new trends, you say that a new, uh, if you have some new ideas, uh, it would be great. And today we really have a great conference at FW Days. Uh, we have a founder of Native PHP. Have you ever mm -hmm. heard about native PHP and what are your thoughts about it? Okay, so uh, yeah, uh, to be very honest, uh, I have not tried it yet. Um, so I, I, I cannot comment on, on this solution, if it is good or not. Um, but again, I think it's great that, you know, we have such a project in the PHP world um, and uh, I can tell you that you know a few years ago I would have loved to have something similar uh, because you know it's always nice to have native applications. Um, I'm I'm not sure I would have used PHP for uh, native applications to be very honest. Um, maybe you know I would use another language, um, uh, and and maybe that's a great you know uh, um, not everything should be done in PHP, and uh, PHP has a very narrow for oh, oh maybe 30 years ago when it was created it was it, it was really just for the web 
uh, along the years, more features were added. So, so it means that you can use PHP for almost everything. But I think it's not a, a great language for, you know, everything. And, uh, and nowadays, in any case, you're not just, you know, a PHP developer anymore. You are probably using some JavaScript somewhere. So it's more about using the right tool and using the right uh, language. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not even using just PHP on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm using uh, Go a lot, for instance, because I think there is, you know, using Go and PHP, Go, JavaScript and PHP is really a, a great combo. Um, and um, I'm not even sure which language or which framework I would use for a native application, to be very honest. Um, so anyway, I would uh, I, I would like to try a native PHP to see how it works and, uh, you know, what we can do with it. Um, so maybe next time you can ask me the question again. I will have more uh, information about it. Yeah, uh, I, I hope so. You know, native PHP was released maybe three weeks ago. It's a better version. Mm -hmm. It's not production ready, but it's really cool how PHP community is developing. So we are not talking about some competition between frameworks, between technologies, but we're we're all working on marketing of PHP, of getting new customers, new users to our world. Because uh, maybe one of the biggest problem of PHP is that it is not uh, there is no good marketing um, in PHP. It's just uh, you need to, you may start, you yeah. may create your own application. Oh, there, there is something so? unique. Yeah, there is something unique uh, in the PHP world. The fact that we have so many um, uh, off-the-shelf applications, you know, like CMSs, e-commerce applications, etc. And I think it's kind of unique. And we also have a lot of companies uh, around frameworks and uh, um, libraries and frameworks and whatever. Uh, you know, uh, if we are talking about Drupal, there is a full ecosystem behind Drupal. If we are talking about uh, Magento, there is, uh, you know, Adobe behind Magento and, uh, and you know, th there is a long list of CMSCs, e-commerce platform, etc. Uh, that are backed by companies. And I, I think it's kind of unique. If you have a look at other languages, it's not so much the case. So we are in a very good position. Uh, so that's why I think that maybe we are not very good at marketing uh, the PHP language itself, but we are very good at developing uh, solutions that are heavily used in the enterprise market, um, for sure. Um, and, and, and the great thing about uh, the PHP market as well is, you know, innovation is not just uh, about the frameworks, it's about everything that is built on top of the language itself. So Symfony is based on top of the PHP language and all the new innovations that are happening there. And then Laravel maybe uh, has been possible because it is based on Symfony and then you can build something on top of Laravel, et cetera, et cetera. So I think if you want to innovate, maybe you don't need uh, to actually create a competitor for Symfony, but maybe you can build something on top of what already exists. And I think that's where most innovation should happen nowadays. Yeah, a really interesting point of view of uniqueness of PHP in a strong ecosystem for building uh, uh, for building e-commerce projects and so on. And uh, talking about innovations, uh, just uh, uh, how do you see the future of the symphony? Uh, in which direction uh, symphony is moving right now? Yeah, innovation. Uh, that that's always uh, you know a tough question because um, uh, there is something kind of unique uh, with Symphony: the fact that we are doing two releases a year, um, and uh, we know the dates, right? End of May and end of November, and it means that we don't have any roadmap. So if you ask me what is going to be part of Symphony Seven. I don't have the answer. I don't know. It depends on the community. It depends on what you want. It depends on, you know, what, what, what we need, um, which means that it's kind of difficult to answer the question about innovation because I don't have the answer. Um, what I know is that along the years, we've been adding more and more new components. Uh, and maybe it's time to also rework uh, some old ones. 
Um, and I have a couple of examples in, in my head right now. The first one is Finder. It's a very small component, but it, you know, it's one that has uh, been studied maybe 20 years ago. It was you know, one of the very first components in Symfony, uh, part of Symfony 1. And if you have a look at the code, you can see that ah, it's not that good. So maybe it's, it's it, you know, and uh, I've been thinking about, do, uh, you know, we're working and maybe we're rewriting from scratch uh, the final component for so many years. So maybe someone uh, would want to do that uh, for uh, Symfony 7. Uh, the, the other one is console. Uh, which is a, a mix of uh, different things. So maybe it's time to uh, think about the, the next version of console as well. The big, you know, a big change there is probably needed. Um, and, and, and then when we're talking about innovation, it's always about uh, innovation without breaking backward comp compatibility, right? It's also about making sure that um, people can upgrade from one, ver one version to the next. And when we're talking about two new versions per year, uh, it's, it's a lot. Uh, if, you're talking in a, if you're talking about a developer that is doing uh, professional work, uh, you know, being able to upgrade twice a year is a challenge. So we are trying to make sure that upgrading is as easy as possible. Um, and, and there we have um, something that is kind of unique as well, uh, the fact that we have a mono repository, the fact that we have one big Git repository with everything in there. Um, and it's a huge advantage, a huge one, because when we want to do a change, uh, we can do it consistently across the board. So it helps us a lot, making sure that um, we are doing things consistently, making sure that they are um, done everywhere, and um, and making sure that you know we can share as mo uh, uh, as much as possible. So, for instance, when we are talking about backward compatibility, we as we have a full framework uh, to be able to do that, and it's consistent in all you know the different components. Um, and I think it's part of the uh, the success of Symfony, uh, the tools that we have, the processes that we have as well. Uh, it helps a lot. It helps you know scaling a project without having too many people dedicated to the project as well. Okay, uh, thank you, Fabien, for that answer. And you are talking more uh, a lot of about contributors that uh, they are developing your framework. And just uh, for me, it's interesting. What about Symphony Core Team? Uh, how many people do you have, and how uh, uh, you manage them? So, uh, and as far as I understand, there is Nicholas who is working permanently with the framework, and as I'm a lot of people involved in uh, core development? Yeah. Um, okay, so I think th th there is not a big difference between uh, core team members and uh, I would say regular contributors. So if you want to contribute, you can, right? Uh, there is no privileges, uh, you know, uh, from the core team. The big thing is that the core team is able to actually merge pull requests. Uh, not all the con contributors can do that, right? That's, that's the big thing. Um, mm -hmm. Apart from that, uh, to answer your question, I'm not even sure. Uh, let me count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <laughs> so we have uh, about 25 uh, core team members as of today, which is a wow. huge number. If you compare that to many other uh, open source libraries, that's a huge number. Um, and, you know, you were talking about managing the core team. I think there is no such thing as managing the core team. Um, that's an open source project. I'm not paying them, right? Uh, they are doing that uh, in their free time, which means that um, the contract is really simple. If you want to contribute, contribute. If you don't want, that's fine. So if someone from the core team is not contributing for a couple of months, that's fine. Right, there is no pressure to actually do something, um, and uh, and you know it's sometimes you have a, a big project so you cannot contribute anymore. Uh, that's fine, or you have a baby. That's fine, or you know you don't feel like uh, doing anything for open source. That's fine as well. And then all of a sudden you have some free time. You are willing to contribute, or 
you have one feature that you really want to uh, to be in so you're working like crazy making sure that you're doing the pull request reviewing things so it you know it's it's free you, you can do whatever you want um the only thing is if you're part of the core team it means that you are committed uh, to help uh, the symphony project in the long term right so i'm not talking about a few months i'm talking about a few years um but I know that at the end of the day, all the code is part of Symfony uh, is also my responsibility as the uh, 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 leader of the project, right? So I, I, I know that at some point, I, I should be able to maintain all the code base, which is kind of scary at times. Um, so that's, that's uh, uh, the way uh, we work uh, with the core team. Uh, and of course, if you have a look at the 25 members, you will see that maybe half of the team has been uh, working uh, with Symfony for maybe more than 10 years. So they know Symfony wow. ins and outs. Um, and my role maybe is to make sure that all the core team members understand my vision, uh, make sure that they understand uh, where I want to go with Symfony, the core values of the framework, how I want to manage the project and the pull request and the contribution how to interact with uh, uh, other people of the uh, of the community because at the end of the day the most important thing uh, is not you know it's not the code it's the people it's the community that's the yeah. you know uh, the heart of uh, an open source project because you know if you have some free code with an open source license but no users it's not really open source right it's just free code that you can download. Uh, but the power of an open source project, and that's why Laravel and Symfony are very powerful because there are so many people uh, using those uh, frameworks. That's the, um, the big difference. Um, and uh, uh, so you, you're sure that whatever the question you have, there is someone somewhere with the answer. Um, and that, that, that's great. Having so many people uh, being able to help. And the last thing is, when we're talking about contributions, it's not just about the code. We have also many people helping with the documentation. Uh, we have a lot, uh, um, a lot of people helping there. It's also about helping people uh, in the, you know, the GitHub. Uh, um, I don't remember the name uh, forum, and uh, on Slack as well. And without those people. Uh, <sighs> there is no framework, right? We need people being able to answer issues and, and questions and, and things like that. So it's not just about the contributions in the code itself. It's more than that. Yeah, and uh, just a quick uh, question. Uh, are you coding uh, by yourself uh, on a daily basis? Uh, are you contributing by yourself in uh, Symfony? Uh, sorry, can you say it again? Uh, are you contributing uh, to the Symfony framework on a daily basis and just uh, by yourself? So, yeah. or you just reviewing yeah. it? Yes. No, I mean, I, I'm trying to. Obviously, um, I have less time than 20 years ago uh, because, you know, I have a lot of other responsibilities and uh, other things to, to manage as well. I'm trying to contribute as much as possible. But as you said, it's mainly about reviewing, merging, making releases, uh, talking to people, and less about contributions. But if you have a look, uh, you know, during the last year, uh, I think just just in in Symphony 6.3, which was uh, released um, in at the end of uh, November, um, at the end of uh, yeah, um, I have three new uh, components. Um, so. Uh, webhook, remote event, what is the last one? Oh, and um, and uh, the scheduler component as well. So the scheduler is a bit spe special because it was just not about me. It was about uh, one guy uh, and he, he did an amazing work there and I helped him uh, making sure that we can release that code as a component. So. Uh, and in 6.4 or 7.0, I will probably have uh, two new components as well there. So, uh, you know, I'm not doing uh, that much uh, maintenance anymore or bug fixes or uh, less 
than uh, you know what I've, I did in the past. I'm trying to make sure that we can evolve the framework and uh, having new components where, when I think it makes sense and uh, when I think it's uh, it's much needed. Oh, uh, thank you for that. It's really amazing. Great work. Uh, Nicholas just mentioned uh, and showed us uh, uh, new components like scheduler, like uh, remote event and webhook. Uh, so it's really great that you continue to develop uh, this framework. And also you said that um, there are uh, 25 team members who are contribute, mm -hmm. who are uh, contributors on regular basis in core team and uh, mm -hmm. uh, they are not paid so uh, I have a question how you motivate them uh, to work with you and what is your main mission as a founder of Symfony and do you have some yeah I have one <laughs> a couple of them actually um, I think, as I said before, uh, my main mission is making sure that uh, uh, we follow the, the, you know, my initial vision for the framework. Uh, I want to make sure that Symphony will be sustainable uh, for the foreseeable future. So make sure that, you know, uh, Symphony can still continue and evolve even if I stop working on it. Um, and I think it's, uh, it's uh, the most important thing there. So making sure that we have the right processes, that we uh, write everything that we are doing. So documentation there is also very important and making sure that whenever we have uh, uh, new things uh, that we can document them. Let me give you one small example. Um, this week we had uh, an email on uh, the security uh, uh, mailing list saying, oh, there is a security issue in Symfony and it's in a mock class, right? So when people are using, are mocking a class in Symfony, there is uh, a security issue in, I don't remember, I think it was in the uh, session mock uh, class. But as this is a mock class, this is only for testing. So we, we don't guarantee any security uh, there because it doesn't make any sense, uh, but it was not documented. So I created a pull request saying that we don't guarantee any uh, security if you are using mocking uh, classes in uh, in production, because you should not uh, do that. And if you are using any classes in the test uh, sub namespace, right? Uh, that's a small thing, but it was the first time someone reported something in these mock classes. It was not documented, so we added that to the documentation. So the next time we will have that, yeah. we have some documentation, and we will make sure that you know we can refer to that as well. Uh, and I think that's that's important. Uh, making sure that we can evolve the code, but also evolve the processes, evolve the documentation, how to contribute and things like that. Um, and now I think I don't remember the question anymore. <laughs> what was your question again? Uh, uh, okay, just to uh, understand that, um, what about your mission globally as a founder of Symfony? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So uh, again, I think it's, it's making sure that Symfony is uh, sustainable, and making sure that uh, even if I quit uh, at some point, uh, Symphony will continue and will evolve in these, you know, with the same vision that I have, uh, and making sure that uh, the philosophy stays the same, basically. And that's yeah. also why we have so uh, many people in the core team, because you know, with twenty-five people, we I'm, I'm sure that some of them will be able to take over. Yeah. Uh, I've got it. I, I also think that you are not only about Symphony framework, you're about uh, PHP world because uh, Symphony is a big part of PHP. And uh, Nicholas told us that uh, he is also a core member of PHP team. And uh, he just, uh, you influence, uh, you may influence on new features that will come in uh, next versions mm -hmm. of PHP. He told about uh, about attributes, uh, about uh, not attributes, uh, about uh, returning this and functions, uh, return mm -hmm. type and your this. So, and really, you're changing the world and you're changing the PHP community as well. So, just uh, I think that uh, it is more than symphony and 
talking about uh, not only work. Uh, there was a question: how you manage, uh, how you maintain uh, work-life balance, and and what helps you not to burn out at work? Because twenty years, it's really a tremendous uh, time working on one project. Yeah, um, that's a great question. I think the key here is, um, you know, 20 years ago, um, I wanted to make sure that I, you know, I was really quick to answer all the questions, all the issues, all everything. Uh, on uh, So it was subversion back then, it was not Git. Uh, we had a forum, we had a mailing list, and making sure that I can answer everything. Nowadays, you know, it's just impossible. So I, I think that the key here is it is just open source. So if I feel like contributing, I do. If not, that's fine. It's not an issue. It's not a problem. Uh, 20 years ago, whenever I, I received, uh, you know, an email saying there is a security issue in Symfony, I was like, wow, 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 wow. Let's stop the world make sure that we can fix it right away and make releases as fast as possible. And I think it was, it put a lot of pressure on me and uh, it was not sustainable. Um, nowadays, it's not the case anymore. We receive a security issue. Uh, we make sure that we take the time as a team to review the problem, make sure that we can assess it is really a security issue. We are working together uh, on a solution and then we make releases. So I think it's also about the pace of innovation and uh, and uh, make sure that you don't have any pressure and make sure that if someone is not happy with the framework, that's fine. We don't care. I don't care anymore. If you like Symfony, great. If you don't like Symfony, I don't care because you, know, you cannot please everybody. It's just not possible, right? Yeah. So I do want to convince everybody that Symfony is nice, but if you're not convinced, that's fine. That's fine. If you think that Laravel is, is way better than Symfony, that's fine. It's okay. There are so many PHP developers out there, right? We can have two, three, ten frameworks. We could have ten frameworks in the PHP world. That would not be an issue. Um, oh, yeah, so uh, it's, and yeah. it's also, you know, at, at, at some point, uh, when you've been working on something for 20 years, it's not even work anymore, right? It's like when I have a, a couple of hours, it's like reviewing code, merging code. It's it's kind of relaxing, I would say. Uh, <laughs> uh, so it's it's also about doing something else. So when I'm, you know, when I'm I'm fed up with calls with people uh, and, and and meetings and things. Um, being able to review code and merge code is, is uh, much easier for me. It's not even work anymore. Uh, so I like to do that as well. It's kind of uh, automatic now. Yeah, I've got it. It's like uh, your new life and uh, just, uh, you're doing it uh, to relax, to just uh, to exercise yourself, maybe. Uh, it's really a uh, really great scene without uh, making it without any pressure. I just uh, said one, maybe uh, keyword. Uh, if if the work may be done without any pressure, it, it would be done better, I think. And uh, just uh, there is a question about uh, your opinion. Mm, our, the guy wanted to know where the uh, the PHP and Symfony stand in the current and upcoming era of AI and uh, machine learning. What do you think? <laughs> Great question. Uh, and again, I think, you know, maybe PHP is not, so maybe, no, not maybe. For sure, PHP is not the right <laughs> language if you want to train models. Um, it's not where it happens, right? So you should use Python maybe there. Um, so, but in any case, when we're talking about machine learning and uh, AI, we're talking about using AI in our applications. And there, it's mainly about talking with APIs or training models outside of you know the PHP world and then using them in, in, in the PHP world. 
So I think there is no big challenge there for uh, uh, PHP as a language or for frameworks. So maybe at some point we can have some nice abstractions on top of APIs, making sure that you know we can simplify the work of calling APIs like we did with Notifier and Mailer and and, and, and things like that. Um, but I I don't believe that we need to uh, make sure that we can train models directly uh, in in PHP. Um, and again, maybe we can interact with C libraries, so we can have a, a pair a pickle package there. Maybe that's also an option. Uh, but it's more about integrating things that already exist out there instead of innovating directly in PHP. Okay, got it. Thank you for for that uh, answer. And uh, now let me be uh, one more question about. Uh, about your decisions and uh, for example uh, are there any fund uh, fundamental desi design decisions in symphony that you would like to change uh, to change given your vision today so mm -hmm. is there anything architectural yeah. uh, so today i don't think so uh because you know the so Symfony is, is really about two different uh, things. Uh, we had version one of Symfony, which was very different from what we have today. And at some point, I decided to actually uh, start from scratch again for Symfony 2.0. And the architecture that I've decided uh, uh, to define for Symfony 2.0 is still the same today, exactly the same. If you have a look at uh, HTTP kernel, uh, it barely changed in the in the last 10 years. It's almost the exact same code that we had 10 years ago. Um, and it, it's been the case because with 2.0, I made some radical changes. The fact that I wanted to have decoupled components that you can use standalone. I wanted to make sure that we are using startups like HTTP, uh, make sure that we are not reinventing the wheel. Uh, and I think it was the, the best decision ever. Um, and then the fact that we are not breaking a backward compatibility so much and trying to have an upgrade path uh, from one major version to the next also helped a lot. So if you have a look at the, the, main, um, uh, the main decisions, uh, I think they were good. Uh, but then again, uh, PHP evolves, uh, the world around PHP evolves as well. And I think we've been uh, doing a great job at making sure that we can evolve and innovate within the same framework, within the same rules that I've, you know, set up uh, uh, for Symfony 2.0. Um, so to answer your question, I think I would not change anything. Um, uh, and uh, I don't see any big changes in the, in the next few years either. I think we don't need them. But of course, if you have a look at the code that you, you are able to write nowadays with Symfony 6 versus Symfony 2, the code you write is very different, right? You talked about PHP attributes, for instance. It was a huge change, and, yeah. and, and we made sure that you can use them directly in Symfony. And so many other changes out there. Uh, but the, 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 the main principles are still the same. Yeah, uh, it's really glad to hear because, you know, uh, when you started Symfony, it was maybe a version of PHP 5, 5.2 in 2004. Oh, the very first version of, okay, let me tell you something. I hate PHP. Yeah. I don't like PHP. <laughs> I've never liked PHP. Never. Wow. And I've, That's so, why you and, created and, Symfony. Yeah, exactly. And no, 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 not that. So, so the thing is, so here in France, uh, PHP was huge even before PHP 5. But before PHP 5, I did not want to use PHP. It was so whatever. But then uh, when I saw the very first uh, draft of PHP 5, I was like, hmm, it's kind of interesting. It's, it's, it's way better than before. So I started to have a look at PHP with PHP 5. And, uh, and uh, um, you know, uh, at Sensor Labs, we had a, a project that we wanted to do with PHP. We were in a hurry and my co-founder asked me if I would like to actually code 
uh, this uh, uh, website for a customer. And I was like, ah, oh, maybe, maybe not. Okay, I'm going to do that. I'm going to use PHP 5 and I'm going to, you know, try a few things there. And it was the start of Symfony. It was uh, at the end of 2004. And then early 2005, uh, we delivered the project. It was a huge success. And then I extracted Symfony from that project. And we opened source that, you know, in October 2005. Um, yeah. So I, I've never worked with PHP uh, before PHP 5. Uh, so fantastic. definitely P PHP 5.0. Oh, it's really fantastic. It was your first work and you've just created a framework from the scratch. Wow. Uh, it's really a great story. And I think that now um, I really hate, hate the PHP uh, until version 5.4, I think. That only uh, in version 5.4, it becomes, it became, uh, very nice. And from the version seven, I should say that uh, it's completely changed. It's a new game, new challenges, new speed. So for now, mm -hmm. for, for me, PHP is, uh, would be one of the best, uh, uh, one of the best options. And for you, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe on this, maybe on this, um, um, it's, it's kind of weird that, uh, PHP 8, uh, people hate PHP, they hate JavaScript. Uh, a lot of people are saying that Go is a very bad language. The main thing about PHP, JavaScript, and Go is that it's easy to get things done. And at the end of the day, you want to code, you want to be productive, and they are great at that. Um, so it's not the best languages out there, uh, but they did something right. Uh, the fact that you can be productive, they are easy to learn, they are easy to scale, uh, and especially for PHP. The great thing about PHP is the fact that you can host a PHP website anywhere. It is stable, it scales, um, and, uh, and, uh, and if you have a look at, uh, at PHP and the way it works, it's kind of funny that you know we are all talking about microservices. I hate microservices, by the way. Um, but... <laughs> PHP invented microservices before it was hype. Because if you think about PHP and the model, uh, whenever you start a new request, you start something from scratch, and at the end of the request, you trash everything, right? This is exactly yeah. what you're doing with a microservice. Um, and uh, it's kind of mind-blowing that the ideas and the fundamental ideas of PHP were the, the, the right ones. I think they were they were great. Maybe it's a bit slow, but um, I think it was uh, it was you know all about great decisions there. Yeah, uh, I really thankful you for this uh, Q and A session, for this answers, for your vision, for your work, uh, for your impact in the PHP community. Uh, I really uh, proud of Symphony, proud of what you are doing, and uh, I would like to. Uh, to invite you to in our Discord chat to have some uh, discussion just uh, uh, with uh, not a lot of people. Uh, and uh, we'll continue our talk about uh, asynchronous PHP and uh, how about new features or how we can use it in Symfony. So thank you so much. Thank you for supporting Ukraine, for coming us to our F Double Days conference and have a nice day. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.